The following program may contain subject matter and language suitable for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. And welcome back to episode two uh, of The Meltdown. Uh, his name is Jeff. And his name is Norm. And today we are talking about where we came from, and that is genealogy, or the study of where we came from, I should say. Right. Um, so, yeah, like we mentioned on uh, last last week's show, knowing your roots, mm -hmm. right? Wanting to determine where you came from, wanting to determine what your heritage is, what are you... What are you made of? What makes you up? What nationality, what race, what have you? Um, that can be a, a, a great thing to learn or maybe not so good if you find out maybe you were related, you know, to someone you might not want to be related to or you, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there, a genealogy has opened a lot of doors yeah. <laughs> and uh, in our stupid stupidness today, we're going to discover uh, some of the horror stories that people have come across uh, by taking these DNA tests and learning more about their, their past. So stick around for that. Um, first, we're going to look uh, at six weird but true facts about genealogy. And then we will have our good friend, Lou Sarcino, in to give us his take on roots. I can't wait to, uh, to watch that. So let's begin the show. Jeff, do you want to take us to our very first segment? All right, it's time for some Meltdown Fun Facts. All right, here we go. Six weird but true facts about DNA. Okay. I think before I'd said six weird and true facts about genealogy, scratch that. We're going to be looking at six weird but true facts about DNA. Do you know what DNA stands for, Jeff? Oh, I used to know, and, you know, at the moment it escapes me. No, I don't remember. Do you write... Diarrhea? Denia no. Uh, deni denial? You can't no, spell No, no, no. I just had it. I just had it. I just had it. Can't spell denial it's, without no, DNA. No, it's one of <laughs> it's one of these words. Um, deribonucleic acid. Uh, deribonucleic acid. Okay. DNA. There you go. Okay. Okay, number one. Your DNA could stretch from the earth to the sun and back 600 times. Oh. If unwound and linked together, the strands of DNA in each of your cells would be six feet long. With 100 trillion cells in your body, that means if all your DNA were put end to end, it would stretch over 110 billion miles. That's hundreds of round trips to the sun. So there you go. And, you know, uh, we at the Meltdown, we like evidence of things. So if anyone is willing to go out there and have their... Uh, DNA stretched that six feet from every single cell in your body. Uh, I, I'd like to personally test this fact out. Yeah, I sure, think that would sure be pretty be cool. People yeah. Be willing to, yeah. To, uh, participate in that. It'll be the yeah. ultimate test you'll take because you ain't <laughs> coming back from that. <laughs> all right. Uh, number two, we're all 99.9% .9 alike. Wow. Of the three billion base pairs in the human genome, only 0.1% are unique to us. While that 0.1% is still what makes us unique, it means we're all more similar than we are different. Mm. Here's another fact. Genes make up only about 3% of your DNA. Genes are short segments of DNA, but not all DNA is genes. All told, genes are only about 1-3% to of your DNA. The rest of your DNA controls the activity of your genes. So what do you think of that? I keep thinking of pants. <laughs> I know you're not talking <laughs> the activity, about... Oh, I've got activity in my genes, I'll tell you that much. That's what Jeff is saying. I didn't say it. That's what Jeff was saying. He's got activity <laughs> in his genes. Okay? That's disgusting, Now I'm thinking Jeff. of Blue Jean by David Bowie. My oh, uh, what is, a great song. My mind is racing here. I know, I know well, you're talking about scientific <laughs> yeah, genes. My mind is racing and I got activity in my genes. <laughs> we all know what Jeff's is thinking that, about, huh? Wasn't that one of the rejected David Bowie lines? <laughs> yes, yes. 
<laughs> that one's not going to work. <laughs> All right, here's another uh, fact. A DNA test can reveal you're more Irish than your siblings. Yeah. Your sister could be much more Irish than you, and this is true for any of over 350 regions covered by the Ancestry DNA test. So your sibling could also be more or less British, Nigerian, or Scandinavian than you. Well, kind of an interesting fact yeah. if you have siblings and, you know, it's different because uh, I guess maybe you just always oh, got more of the Irish in them, you know? <laughs> Uh, all right, here's another fact. The human genome contains 3 billion base pairs of DNA. DNA molecules are shaped like twisted ladders, and the rungs on that ladder are made of bases. Adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. And I hope I pronounced those correctly. Locked together in pairs with hydrogen bonds. The really cool part is they pair up in a very specific way. A always pairs with T, and C always pairs with G. Hmm. So there you go. Consistency. Consistency, yeah. And our last fun fact about DNA today, your DNA could link you to places you'd never imagine. Genetics has the power to tell you things you never dreamed of knowing, from just the DNA in your saliva. With an ancestry DNA test, for example, you can find out which world regions your ancestors may have lived in hundreds to thousands of years ago, what bonded them over generations, and why and where they migrated all from your DNA. Hmm. So, I mean, that is interesting. And it's certainly, it's, it's uh, you know, obviously this, this information came from Ancestry.com, which is why they, they, they mentioned. I think they're one of the largest. There's Ancestry, there's... Uh, is, is the one, two, three and me a separate company or is that also Ancestry? Mm, I'm not sure if that's part of it. But it's all about taking a DNA test and, you know, finding out what makes you up and stuff. And I think many, many, many years ago, if I'm, if I'm not uh, mistaken, DNA tests were being recommended to see if you were susceptible to maybe certain illnesses or, mm. or what have you, right? Uh, certain issues in your body, medical things, what have you. And I think more recently DNA tests are now... And I think they're very popular now because people just want to find out what their background is. Mm -hmm. Never mind, you know, that kind of information. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes when we go exploring in life and we, we want to find the truth, we want to dig into something really deeply, sometimes we find stuff that maybe we didn't want to find. And that's coming up uh, in our Stupid Stupidness segment. But first, we're going to go to a funny little segment in which we call... A Meltdown Minute with Lou. Genealogy, <clears throat> excuse me, I got excited, is the science of uh, discovering your roots and not so much the science of discovering genies. My point is this, I'll give you a little bit of background in terms of my, my own history, right? So my last name, Saracino, comes from, is a derivation of the Saracens. Now the Saracens was a ethnic slur that the Catholic Church used to use against Middle Eastern people. So as you can see, a lot has changed. My point is, on the second side, on my mom's side, her name is Damore, which in Italian means of love. And what that means is that in feudal times when the king or the prince or whatever were going to town and have a little wah wah with somebody, right, and they have a baby, that bastard child was called a child of love. If you have any questions as to why I'm having a struggle generally with life, that might break it down a little bit for you. And then further to that, I'm Italian. Now, here's the thing. Italians invented both opera and the mafia. There's going to be a little drama. You understand? Somebody's going to be yelling at some point. Genealogy. Thank you, Lou. And now it's time for some Meltdown Stupid Stupidness. All right, so we're going to have some fun with this. Uh, here's a list. Ten people who did Ancestry DNA tests for fun and got more than they bargained for. And these are actual stories from actual people who took the test. So here's our first one. My mom did 23andMe this summer. It came back saying my uncle was only a half uncle. She asked family friends and it turns out my grandmother had an affair and passed my mom off as her father's kid. A fact that my grandmother clearly intended to take to her grave, but science caught up. Mm. Family secrets, right? That's yeah. what this exposes in all of these cases. Yeah. Here's the second one. In my genetics class, we do a blood typing lab, and our teacher told a story about her first year doing it where there was a girl who had a blood type that meant her dad 
couldn't be her actual father, and the mom, who also worked at the school, got caught cheating. So far, too I mean, It makes me want to laugh. You know, here's the thing. You know, when you commit, when you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go off, I'll preach you here, but you know, when you commit a crime, I'm just saying, and I'm sorry, but cheating is a crime. I, I, I don't care how you look at it. Cheating is a crime, right? You're just not supposed to do it. Uh, when you commit a crime like that, you will be caught. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but you will be caught. What do you think about that, Jeff? What do you think of that you little know, tirade? Uh, huh? Especially now with, with, with science, obviously, yeah. and just maybe guilt feelings as well. Which is, so, I don't know. Uh, be careful what you do, is my yeah. point, right? Yeah. And w watch what you say and do in public. Because there's cameras everywhere. Yeah. You're always, you know, as soon as you step out of your house, Jeff, Never mind with, you know, traffic cameras, right? I mean, yeah. there's there's traffic cameras all over the city. Yeah. They look at intersections. They can see things. Yeah. People now, more than ever, have dash cams on their cars. And so they can you, you can be spotted in so many different ways. And so every store you go into has security cameras. Mm -hmm. Watch what you do and say in public, folks, because it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. <laughs> I'm telling you this. Be careful. I've heard too many stories of, of just people doing shit and then they're all shocked when there's video evidence of them doing it. And they'll flatly deny it. And you can't get away with that <laughs> unless you're Donald Trump. Because <laughs> he can deny everything. And now, as I digress, <laughs> we shall return to our list of uh, horror stories. And here's another one from a user. A former coworker of mine took the test and found she had a different father than her sister. And neither were related to their father. She decided to confront her mom about her infidelity. She found out that her mom and dad were into group sex and that the biological fathers could be a number of gentlemen. <laughs> hey, I don't know who your dad is. <laughs> could be that guy, could be that guy, could be the mailman. I don't know. We had sex with everybody. How would you like to... How would you like to... Anyway, we'll talk about this afterwards. All right, here, here, here is, here's another one. So I did Ancestry. My father is an eighth Cherokee and my mother a little. They insist that they're on the rolls somewhere. Ancestry came back 0% Native American. They're not sure which is worse. Did I get switched at the hospital or is their Cherokee heritage a lie? Mm -hmm. uh, and again, not that's not horrible, horrible, but it, it does make you question. And I want to bring that up after. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. This is how my brother found out my father wasn't his father. I'm adopted and last year found my biological father and mother. One of my new brothers also took the test and we did not match. Although I did match with our father and he did not. Found out mom had had an affair while father was in Korea during the war. Oops. <laughs> Caught up with you. I'm telling you I know what I'm talking about. Here's another one. My girlfriend got us tests for Christmas. And ever since posting about it on Facebook, my mom has been sending her messages asking her to tell her the results before anyone else, including me. So, <laughs> mom knows something that she doesn't want to come to light again, giving you that finger, that waving finger, <laughs> uh, uh, the told you so finger. Okay, here's, uh, here's one more. My wife had been told she was of Native American descent her entire life. Supposedly, her great-grandmother was full-blood native. This is a story her family still preaches to be true. Well, my wife does the DNA test only to discover it matches 100% with folks in Europe. Not a drop of Native American in her. So, I mean, you know, that to me, that's not harsh. I mean, now, if you believe something your whole life, right, it, it yeah. comes as a bit of a shock. But it's, uh, it's these other stories that are pretty crazy. So here's one. Through my DNA test, we discovered that my father has an older half-brother that we never knew about before. He was adopted and trying to find his biological family. Turns out my grandpa had a little thing on the side. Both he and my grandmother have passed away. We don't know if either of them were aware of the child now grown up. And here's our second last one. My very French-Canadian aunt, related to me by marriage, and her sister both took the test. My aunt's result was more or less exactly what she expected. Her sister found out that she was 50% Arabic, not French at all. Looks like Mama had some explaining to do. 
<laughs> Just saying. There's the finger. <laughs> Norm's giving the finger to I'm a lot of people. Giving the finger to a lot of people today. <laughs> I'm telling you. Here's our last one. All right. A friend of mine was always treated very badly by her father, and her mother was always very emotionally unavailable and distant. After a huge family blow up, she found out that her mother had an affair with her brother in law. Her father considered her a bastard and that both he and her mother had to live with our mistakes. Well, last year, the family, except for her, did 23andMe. Pissed off, she did her own 23andMe. She is the child of both her parents, not her mother and uncle. The family members are horrified, regretful, and remorseful. Nothing makes up for 45 years of being shitty to someone from birth. And now that she knows, she's done with all of them. That to me, that, that is, that is so sad, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's one thing to think that your parents are your parents your whole life. And then one day you find out one isn't, or both aren't or whatever. And mm -hmm. in the case of adoption, that's, that's, that's moot, right? It doesn't really matter. Uh, in fact, you know, I, I'm all for adoption. I think it's great that people will, will adopt, some, you know, a, a child and raise them. I mean, that's, that's more loving than, than you can imagine. But, uh, again, it's, it's something to find out that you're not maybe related and it, it, it would be bothersome. I think though in this, in this case, especially these people assumed, yeah, right. That, that she was like the father assumed it wasn't his daughter, but it was his brother's daughter mm -hmm. and, you know, treated her horribly for 45 years yeah. and then to find out, oh my God, you were my kid. How do you, like I said, how do you undo 45 years of being treated yeah. like crap? And what a waste, folks. What a waste of life. I sometimes think, Jeff, and here's my editorial. I'm, I'm going to pretend I'm Jerry Springer. We've had all the, all the bullshit, all, you know, all the paternity tests are done. And now I'm going to have my two minutes in the corner to give you my, uh, my thoughts and feelings and, you know, my, my words of wisdom. But I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, sometimes your family is your family, right? If you love your family, your family loves you. Isn't that enough? Yeah. Like, isn't that enough? Is there really always a need to try to find something that will divide your family that could possibly divide your family? I'm not saying it will, but I don't know. I, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that I'd want to actually take that journey. Would, is that something that you'd consider? Yeah, I've actually been interested in tracing my roots for quite some time, and yeah. uh, I, I mean, to be honest, I'm not very, I'm not, I'm not, I, I feel like I, I can be certain that my relatives are my relatives, that I'm not going to be surprised and shocked. I just have this feeling. Yeah, I mean, so, so do they. Yeah, so do they, but <laughs> you know what? I mean, I look like my dad, and but I also look like my mom, and so does my brother. My brother, my brother, my brother and my dad at the same age. Uh, you look at pictures of my dad when he's around 25 yeah. and my brother when he's around 25. They, they look like the same people. Yeah. Okay, so that's all we have on gene eology. Next week, uh, we are going to be talking about... So there's an old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's kind of going to be a topic of the show. Why did they bother changing certain things? It's not like anything got improved. They should have just left it the way it was. And what's even worse is when people change things because they think it'll improve and it doesn't, we still have to pay for that change. And then we have to pay for the change to go back to what it was. And now we're all out of money, all unemployed, and very pissed off. <laughs> so you see, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's a very, very important saying. And I wish more people would pay attention to it. We're going to delve into that next week. Before we go, just want to say again to all of you who think that you can get away with shit today and it's <laughs> never going to come back. Oh, no. <laughs> it's coming for you. So if you've done something bad, expect the punishment. <laughs> like how I did that again with my voice. Yeah, I was, lowered it. Yeah, that was, was ominous. All right. And awesome. Awesomely yeah, ominous. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Uh, thank you for joining me once again. Thank you for joining us once again. And until next week. I'm Norm. And I'm Jeff. We'll see ya.